All of this is put into the stew of, of how we're supposed to think about where stocks go from here. Yeah, and the correction go, is, continues. And I think the, the question for the viewer is, is, is the correction in its nature going to be deeper in the sense of what we witnessed in 2022? Or is the correction very similar to 2019? So there's good news and bad news in that. And there's two time periods that I want to utilize here to guide investors through what I believe is going to unfold in Q3. In 2022, very obviously, you had an adversarial Federal Reserve. And the market declined from August 16th through October 13th by 19.6%. In the month of August, you only had 225 basis points worth of rate hikes. You still had uh, another 300 basis points yet to go. And you had an overall downtrend for the market. Now, in 2019, if you study that time frame, the same thing happened, Scott. You went through this malaise in Q3 from July 26th through October 3rd. The S&P declined 5.6%. Here's why I believe that 23 correlates to 2019. Similar to 2019, third year of a presidential election, similar to 2019, the bull structure of markets, 50, 100, 200-day moving averages, all pointing higher. And then lastly, what I think is important to understand is the need for capital, even if interest rates continue to rise in 2023, is not as aggressive. Why do I say that? If you look at S&P corporate debt, only 6% of corporate debt is short-term in its nature. A whopping 75% of that corporate debt is long-term in its nature. So even if rates continue to move, there's not the sensitivity, the impact on servicing the debt for corporations. I think we're going to experience an extended correction through the part of uh, early parts of October, but I don't think it's going to be the depths of what we saw in 2023 to uh, 2022 rather i think it's garden variety somewhere between five to seven percent is that how you see it also carrie and, and maybe the 10 year is going to be our guide if it if it stays elevated or who knows even goes higher from here as long as the data on the economy here in the u.s remains as robust as it is it's hard to imagine a scenario in which rates start to fall well, it's unlikely that rates are going to fall, but let's think about what it means to have a GDP that's growing at 5%. It means that earnings should be stronger than expected. If growth is stronger than expected, we ought to have corporate earnings that are better than expected. And I think what you saw in the market yesterday, to some extent today, is Home Depot and Target say things in July were better. And we're not an owner of Target, we are of Home Depot. And I, I think there's some encouragement in the market if we can see corporate earnings stepping up the pace. We're trading at 20 times this year, 18 times next year. And of course, you look under the covers and a lot of smaller cap names, not the mega caps, are trading at multiples that are attractive. And we can start to see some movement of earnings higher than forecast. We have seen a declining forecast through the year. We can start to see improving forecasts. And that could be the salvation for the market because we know interest rates are not coming down right now with strength that we're having uh, today. But we don't have to see them going up more. And we also can see inflation continue to come down, I believe, with, with rents and China affecting energy prices. So let's just see how corporate earnings can progress. I mean, Jim's going to tell me, I know, look, I mean, the economy is, is as strong as it is. How do you weigh that against the view on rates and what it means for the Fed? It, it's all in the same conversation. It, great point. So let's talk about the Fed. And Joe brought this up. You know, the debate that we might have is whether the Fed's going to raise 25 basis points or not raise at all in September. Compare that. This is what you were doing, okay, Joe? Compare that to 15 months ago when we went into 2022 thinking, ah, maybe they'll raise three times. Then somebody threw out, maybe they'll raise 50 basis points. Then we got four 75 basis point rate hikes. It's just a different tone in the markets right now. Scott, to your point, though, or to your question, it's not really your point. You're asking a question. Where this goes off the rails, where 5.8%, which, by the way, is farcical. That's not what I mean, it's not what it's actually, no. but fine. Um, where this they goes tend, off they the rails. They tend to exaggerate. They yeah. do. Where this goes off the rails is if inflation starts going the other way. And then we get back into what I just described, that discussion of, hey, maybe the Fed's raising 50 basis points, et cetera, et cetera. That's not what it looks like right now. I mean, if you look at the stated CPI, just as a matter of fact, you know, we know that rent is a lagging indicator. It's coming down. We see things like the used car index. I don't think that we're going to see CPI inflect back up in a way that really incentivizes the Fed. 
But with all these great points that are being made, I just want to simplify this down to one thing. You were bringing up uh, Home Depot and Target. Both of those companies say the consumer is fine. The consumer is fine. The consumer is fine is because they're employed. That's going to beget GDP growth, which is going to beget the profits you're talking about. I mean, about. even if it